So the stage is exactly what Kelly had pointed out. There was the possibility. First of all, it was a 100 percent chance based upon the Fed funds futures, interest rate markets, that there was going to be a cut next week. The issue was whether or not it was going to be the quarter point cut or the full half point cut. And there's a whole debate about whether a half point cut was going to signal something worse about the economy. What you got after the kind of mixed, although still generally positive, but mixed report from this morning, slightly hotter than expected month over month inflation when you strip out the effects of food. Core energy. inflation. Correct. Core, Core inflation, inflation on a month over month basis came in one tenth of a percentage point hotter than what consensus Nit was. Nitpickers. OK, so nitpicking. Nitpickers. Fair enough. But, but, what it but did, real quickly, just think of the, if you do point two annualized, that's two point four. If you do point three annualized, it's three point six. So it does kind of have a big delta. There, there's it a does, cumulative it, effect. Correct. You know? But again, when you're looking month over month and extrapolating the year over year, it doesn't often go in that linear totally. kind of approach. So what happened was those interest rate markets had priced in this kind of 65, 35 odds of a 25 basis point versus a 50 basis point. A slightly hotter than expected read may, maybe means that the half point is not justified. You can only really safely go a quarter point, And then you have to rework your financial models to get valuations to where you think they're supposed to. So, be. Tom, the economist, what, what was it in the core inflation that drove that number a, a tenth higher than people were expecting? Yeah. Was it housing? Was it was it shelter? Yeah. So so can I first say, though, that I think the door was virtually closed on a 50 after Friday. Right. I mean, I think you after the job after the jobs, jobs report. I mean, I think you really needed a weak jobs report to really usher in a 50. Um, and obviously that didn't materialize. Well, it wasn't great. It, it, oh, you're preaching to the choir. I mean, I think that they're supposed to go 50. Um, really? Oh, okay. yeah, definitely. Uh, I mean, I saw you. I love how you're like, they should definitely go 50, <laughs> but there's no way they will. No, because I mean, this is the whole, you know, idiom of what will they do versus what should they do. Yeah. Um, and so I would love for them to go 50 because I do think there are cracks. I'd love for them to get to neutral much faster. Um, but I think this is going to be a sort of a 25 basis point um, series of cuts until but, we get but to But let me goal. nerd out on the core inflation Please. number. <clears throat> yeah, because sorry, because I, I think doesn't the isn't the core uh, minus food, minus energy, yep. both of which were flat to down, right? Yep. Yes. And shelter. Yes. Right. Shelter would be in the core, but it would be out of the super core. So the core itself was reflecting that ener that shelter component. Being it was there. reflecting yes. the shelter component, which remains the and stickiest part of inflation. Am I not correct? One hundred percent right. And and I think that will always remain. And by the way, it's almost always the case that shelter is sticky. Um, I, so I love that you mentioned super core because I, I think it's an important idea. Um, I actually don't happen to like Only Kelly would know about Supercore. <laughs> well, this side of the table would not know about Supercore. It's more when they start saying, well, okay, the core, but then Sheldon, you have to, by, yes. by the time you take out enough things, especially the everyday Americans are feeling, they sort of go, I don't really care what the underlying infl inflation trend is at that point. Uh, I listen, you, again, you're preaching to the choir on that. I, I actually, I don't like Supercore. I mm -hmm. think it's a disingenuous way of thinking about inflation because you're effectively stripping out 50% of the weight of inflation, right. and that 50% is deflating, and, and that's part of the consumable basket. I, I so the, I don't know why you would want to strip that out. The question is trend. So if we think that housing is divorced from the broader trend in the yep. economy, I yes. think that's the question after this morning. So here, to me, is the right way of thinking about inflation. Forget about super core, because, again, I think it's a little bit disingenuous. If you just take headline CPI and you take core CPI and you strip shelter out of both of those, that will give you your underlying sense for what's happening from an inflation True. perspective. And when you look at that, guess where they're running at? 2.1? Yeah, it's 1.7%. Well, yeah, but it's wow. under 2. Core and wow. It's under 1.2% it's under for, for headline X shelter. Wow. Keith? So, so to me, that, the, the inflation story, I think, for the Keith, you've been wow. nodding your head a lot. <laughs> Go ahead. What do you want to say? I feel like a bobblehead. I love the nitpickers. <laughs> I love Tom's take on this because people are trying to overthink the unthinkable. To me, it comes down to the litmus test. When you go to the store and you see people pull out their wallet, do they have brand names or designer names? Are they filling up their cart or are they shopping for little bits, nits, and pieces? They're still doing the latter. So it's all about the wallet. So what do you think the market reaction will be if we get next week that 25 percent or 25 basis point or quarter point cut? Uh, isn't it all already baked in? No, it's not, actually, Tyler. And that's a very sharp question. You've got to go to Tom's point here. What should they do versus what are they going to do? My personal take is I think there's still an outside chance Powell does nothing. Really? Because the data about which he's being vigilant 
uh, don't continue to perform the way he wants. So to me, I think the markets, this morning's whipsaw action demonstrates that traders have not yet made up their mind. And when they got data they didn't like, they, to Dominic's point, had to rejigger, reconfigure all those financial models because the cost of carry of all the leverage they used didn't go the way they wanted.